And you mentioned it there, you were disappointed in Fulham's performance. Mm. They really didn't get going until the second half and, and by then the damage was already done. Mm-hmm. But for Chelsea, first win since August. Yes. Incredible to, to think that. But when you look at the likes of who scored, Mudrick and Breuer, of course Breuer is just returning from a, an ACL injury, so mm. great for him to be a part of it and get on the score sheet. But for Mudrick... Yes. I was watching the game last night with my friend Claire who was staying with me and I kind of cheered when he scored and she yes. looked at me like, why are you cheering a Chelsea goal? <laughs> and I said, do you know what? It's not about Chelsea, it's about Mudrick <clears throat> because I kind of felt a bit sorry for all the stick he's got and I know it's been a difficult start for him at Chelsea but I was just really pleased for him to get off the mark. I think you're absolutely right and and great goal as well, really clever run from him, great ball into him, mm. a nice take and, yeah. and, and a confident finish. You know, one, he's, he's been in that situation that a few times since he's arrived at Chelsea and he's either took the shot too early or he's delayed getting the shot off or whatever and he's not quite been able to uh, convince people. So it's lovely for him, you're right, that he should get himself a goal last night. Very important for the team too. Mm. Um, really good Chelsea performance, I thought. Um, you know, sometimes as a, when a team's playing without confidence, you can find yourself too up in a game and then you allow the, the opposition to come back in. You've almost yeah. forgotten what it feels like to win yeah. and, and, and know how to win almost. It's been that long for, for a club like Chelsea and, and, and a lot of these younger players have, have not had that, that feeling on a regular basis of, of actually winning matches. So, so for them, uh, good, good to see Breuer score as well, as well as Mudrick. Two good goals. I thought Conor Gallagher was man of the match. I, I, and I've said before... On, on talk sport I'm not quite sure if Connor I, I wasn't quite sure that he had a future as a starter mm-hmm, at Chelsea mm-hmm. you know I just think that I, I from where they've been and some of the players they've had this spell at the moment obviously with a younger group of players and etc it gives him more opportunities than perhaps he might not have or it might have ordinarily had so uh but he's taken it and I thought last night was the first time I've seen Connor play normally he's at charging, rampaging type, getting on the edge of the box, which he can do that. He can do that very naturally and very well. Last night as well, I thought he really knitted things over nicely and together with with Enzo and mm-hmm. and Caicedo in the yep. middle of the park. I thought it was a three. They totally bossed the game. Um, had complete control in that area. When they were playing their way out, they did it, they did it comfortably and cleverly and then... And then they always looked like they had he in particular Conor Gallagher had the energy to tackle mm. and to get in, to get into the box at the other end or get on the edge of the box at the other end of the field. Really good performance from him. I thought he was their best player, yeah. um, but uh, but it was a stroll for them really. And that's what I would th- I would have thought Fulham fans going home last night would have thought. God, why I'd, I expected at least expected us to uh, to to get some intensity into our game. Robinson was the only one I saw for Fulham last night, as as usual, desperately running at a rate of knots, Nat, to get to the byline, to cross the ball second half, to make something happen for the team. Mm. I just felt they were so passive. They stood off Chelsea. And it's, it's, it was absolutely the kind of game you want if you're Chelsea going into a derby match and not in the best of form. My goodness, that Fulham team last night played the perfect game. Yeah. For Pochettino's men, they really did because they made it easy for them. Yeah, I thought it was really interesting what you said as well because two nil. We always talk about two nil's not. It's a dangerous scoreline, isn't it? Two nil, yes. especially when you go two nil up quite early in a game. Some people might think, "Oh, that's game over already," but it's 19 minutes into a game to be two nil up. It looks as though it's comfortable. Yeah, but one goal back for Fulham that would have changed, could have changed the perspective it, of the match it, very easily. It could have done. The uh, is it Sasha Lukic, the substitute yes, who came on, chance, should have scored, yeah, didn't yeah, he? Yeah. But that was what was that to go then? That that was like what was that 15, yeah, 20 minutes long. to go? Yeah. So there's no guarantees. Even if that one goes in, they'd have found they'd have found another one, but. But it's the character that Pochettino will be happy with then. Yes. So they kept them out. Definitely. Had a shutout for, for Chelsea because they had been conceding goals as, as well. Correct. San- um, Sanchez had that one little aberration second half as well where he tried to play his way out, nearly got pinched on the on the penalty spot right in front of him. But it didn't. And that's maybe a month ago that would have ended up in the back of the net. You know, one, one little error would have got punished. That kind of happens to you when things aren't going very well. But, um, but a really good performance, a great three points for them. And as Maurizio just said there in his in in the clip that we played, 
on the back of the Brighton victory in the Cup, that's the signs are looking good, much mm. better. And what I like as well, I was reading the, some of the comments from Maurizio Pochettino post-match as well, where he was talking about Mudrik, obviously delighted that he'd scored. And he spoke about, actually, we've been, been working really hard on his confidence in training, keeping him behind. They've been doing the crossbar challenge he's All spoken right. about. Just to kind of, I suppose enjoy a bit of football enjoy Correct. the training and, and yeah. uh, you know games like that I'm sure if you can hit the crossbar it makes you feel a bit of, yeah. you can walk around with a bit of uh, height to yourself just, can't you just to sort of relax a little bit and, yeah. and let him start to enjoy it you know yeah. we've read stuff about he's been in the gym when he's been injured and he's 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 like pumping the weights and really trying to do everything he can which is all very admirable but sometimes you've just got to relax a little bit and yeah. when he first when that very first game he played I think was up at Anfield yeah the Liverpool game it, that cameo do you remember when oh. he came on for about 20 minutes we were all thinking this is he's brilliant I remember thinking my goodness this boy looks good because he yeah. looks so sharp and so quick and had a couple of good chances I think in yeah. that 20 minute spell and then since then it's been been difficult for him but lovely to see um, a player that, that everyone has high expectations of actually delivering last night I mean it is quite an, a young Chelsea squad it is, it? and, and that very. perhaps is why Pochettino was a pick for the, the owners and, and the recruitment team because we know how well he's worked with young players mm. and again he spoke about that last night about young people need to settle it's been a massive change for, for Mudrik for example uh, and we've just got to be patient he said with all these young players but essentially and I think that's probably why what, or one of the reasons why they brought in Pochettino because they know he will spend time nurturing some of these players. He's, he's I mean, I, again, since since he had that that team at Southampton mm. and his Spurs team, which he did cultivate into something really good. Obviously, when he went to PSG, you're there. You've got a lot of senior players at, at PSG, Nat. So he had, you know, some of the very very best on the planet. Um, so he wasn't dealing with so many younger players there. No, um, but clearly he has. Um, he has previous in terms of trying to develop younger players and getting them in the team and getting them playing well. So he's got a lot of them, for sure. He's got a lot of options in that respect at, uh, at Chelsea. Matson again, he looked, yeah. you know, he did he did okay, didn't he? Mm -hmm. he? He certainly mm -hmm. did did well enough. I agree with Danny. I really like Levi Colwell. I think he's uh, I think he's got every chance, and he's and it's nice having a bit of versatility in players. Mm. I, now, years ago, every club used to have a player that could sort of go everywhere. Utility. The ut who's, who's Brentford's utility player if they've oh, got one? Oh, that's interesting. Because every I, club used to have I one. I would name right now someone like a Christopher Ayer. Came in as a centre-back but plays right back. Occasionally we'll see him pop up front a little bit. Yeah. Late on in the game, that sort of thing. Maybe I'd look at him right now as a utility player. But nowadays we don't really have that so much, no. do we? We don't really have... Um, look, maybe we do. 8, 10, 89 on the text, please. <laughs> maybe we do have lots of utility players now. But years ago we had someone that could... Yeah, he can play there. He'll go left back. He'll go right back. He'll go centre-half. But, but we, we, we call it now versatile. But back in the day it was utility. utility which player. I don't know if that's a great thing. Do you remember Gary, I remember Gary Mabu who became a great centre-half for mm. Spurs. Mabsy was... I remember him being a midfield player and then he'd, he could play centrally in midfield or gallop up and down a little bit off one side, but obviously became a, a, a very good central defender. But uh, you don't see that quite so much nowadays. Yeah. But Levi Colwell can play left back, he can play centre half. And, and, and one thing's being asked to just sort of sit there. And but, but I like it when players play out of position and then throw themselves at it. And he does that. Mm. I think it's really good. Yeah, absolutely. Well, he was pivotal in that first goal as well, wasn't he, with that pass in Mudrick um, from that left-back role, as you say. Chelsea fans, we do want to hear from you this morning if you want yes. to get in touch. How excited are you? I know it's just one game. It's one victory, but are you enthused by what you saw? Are you confident? Be. Yeah, are you confident that this may be a time of turning a corner for you? 03717 that number again, 03717 Talk Sport Breakfast, waking you up Monday to Friday morning from 6am on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.